everyone should be coming up to here, being able to trigger a dynamic wall of bricks that explode when you hit them a certain amount of times. We now want to create another switch or another brick or another um, thing that we can um, intersect with that will make an arc or make a bridge, a bridge of cubes that we can walk over. So the first thing we need to do is obviously create another, duplicate this uh, cube, or actually we'll put a new we'll put a new shape in so it's not confusing. So this can be anything, a sphere. We'll put it in, and this can be our object to create a bridge. And we're going to call it trigger bridge. Or we'll call it trigger arc. Now we have to go into our first person control and edit our FPS script. So I've already got that open over here. Uh, FPS underscore script. First thing we need to do is create an if statement because we're hitting a new object here and we need to we need to call a, a new function that we haven't defined yet. But first of all, we, we're going to say if I hit this ball, this sphere, and that, that sphere is called trigger arc, then do something. So in here, I'm going to copy this, paste, and we're going to say not wall, I'm going to say arc, that's what I've named it down here. So if I hit, if the first person controller hits an object and that object is called trigger arc, then I'm going to call a function called create arc, and we're also going to destroy it after I hit it. So once I hit it, I can't hit it again and create multiple arcs. It would be like a bug. So we're making sure that we destroy it the same way we did when we create that wall of bricks. So now we need to go down here and we can reuse this function and this code. I'm just going to copy and make sure you copy between parentheses and, or include them. So if I click here, I can see it highlights where it ends. So I'm going to copy from the void. Copy. Command C. Command V. Now it's important that we get these correct. We can't have two functions name the same thing. So and it also identifies this as a function that doesn't exist yet. So that's good. So we need to name this the same as this, create arc. So when I hit this sphere, trigger arc, create or create arc, or call the create arc function, which I'll define down here. Sometimes it's good to clean up your code and make it easy to understand. So I'll put in comments like this. And I'll copy that. And I'll put a description. So this is a function that creates a bridge or arc. I can copy this and paste it here above the create wall. So this is a function that creates a wall of bricks. And that way, when you're scrolling through your code, because it, it uh, inevitably becomes quite large after you um, have finished a project or while you're working on a project, it's easier to navigate to sections. And it's also easy to come back to your code and find out where things are. So here we are. This is a function that creates a bridge or an arc. Here we know that this code creates a set of bricks in a wall. And if you've written our pseudocode, then we should be following that. But it should be something similar to this. We need we only need one loop. Um, we are also not going to use those prefabs anymore. Oh, we can actually. No, no. Let's let's take them out. We're not going to use those prefabs. Instead, we're going to instantiate and use a cube, but dynamic. So this line of code here just does basically this. It says create a cube from scratch, a primitive cube, and put it in a cube variable. Then we need to position it. So I'm going to change that because that was referencing our old new game object prefab. So now we've made our, our own cube game object and put it in here. 
Now we need to move it to where we where we need it. Um, we also don't need this, so let's just clean that up. So it's less confusing. So make a a basic cube, then position it. They're just my comments, so it's easier to, again to come back and understand what's going on. So if we run this now, we know that, well, before we run it, I can see that y is not defined here because we're only running a single loop with an x. So the first thing before we try and run it is we need to define y. And y will be, for the time being, equal to x. So 50 we're going to start at. And we're going to go, let's shorten this to, let's say, 70. And every time it loops through, it's going to plus 2. So 50, 52, 50, let's change this to 60 actually. So 50, 52, 54, 56, 58. And then that means here, the Y position is also going to use the same values. So in theory, our X runs along this way and our Z. So it's going to start 50 on the X. Our Z value down here is 50, so it's going to start from the middle. So X and Z in the middle, 50 and 50, because our map is, my map here at the moment is um, 100 by 100. So if you imagine a grid here of 100 by 100, and I'm setting my, my my position of my cube starting at x50 that means on the x-axis which is the red one that x-axis goes this way and the z-axis goes this way so 50 this way and z50 this way I'm going to start right in the middle the only problem is this y goes vertically so that's on this axis this this green axis. So if I go through this, I can know or see that the bricks will start in this position on the map, but they're going to be 50 high also. They're going to be up in the air. So let's go and see what happens anyway. I'm going to save, make sure we save this, Command S, and let's play and see what happens. Where is it? Over here. If I can see the shadow. There they are. So they did start 50 and 50 in the middle of the map, but they're 50 high also. So let's let's try and fix this. I want this Y to actually start at zero, because that's the height of my map at the moment. So I'm gonna go Y equals X. So the first time around it's gonna be 50. I want it to actually be 0, so I'm going to take away 50. Next time it goes around, 50 is going to be plus 2, so it's going to be 52. I want it to be 2 instead of 52, so this will still work. Let's see what happens now. Command S and test play. There you go, it started at 0. And we now have the start of a bridge. The next part is we need to now establish a steps up and goes across like a almost like the wall um, that we had previously. But we need to start it at oh also we we can change the gap between those bricks too, between the steps. We can change that by saying one. Now let's test that. So we have more bricks, but the gap between the bricks is smaller, so it's easier to step up. We might want to start at two also, because zero is obviously down below the map. 
but for the time being we'll just leave it like that. You can tinker with those values yourself. So now we need to make, um, let's also go to 55 so it doesn't go as high. So that's this first loop sets up the stairs that go up. Now we're going to create another loop that puts some bricks that go across. So all I'm going to do here is put in another loop. I'm going to say this goes to 55, right? So at 55 across, we're going to start. So our X needs to start at 55. We're going to go another five bricks across, so it's going to go to 60 or 61. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put out some cubes, but our Y, I don't want the Y to change. I want it to be a constant. So our Y should be, at the end of this loop, our Y was five because we're going x is 50 first time around, um, y equals x, which is 50, minus 50, which is 0, so that's 0. Then we go up to the next step, 51, y equals 51, take 50, so y equals 1, and so on, until we get to 5. So our top brick is at 5 at the moment, and we want a set of bricks to go across at 5. So let's set 5 at a constant, or y at a constant of 5. Let's see what happens. So Command S. There you go. We put 5 bricks across, or 4 bricks. So now we're sort of, whoops, sort of got a bridge going here. If we want our bridge to go a little bit longer, what do you think we need to do? We need to have our loop go for a little bit longer. So our loop here might go from 55 to 70 instead. And let's see how long that goes for. In theory, if we're going by ones, it should go 15 bricks, I think. So that's much longer. Now, this is the tricky part. We need to make a down ramp or a the same as this but total opposite. This is going to take some tricky work here. So let's see if we can figure it out. So we know that we this creates a stair stair sort of uh, shape to the start of our bridge. So let's copy that and put it at the end. So we're making the stairs up, we're making them flat, that goes across. Now we have to modify this somehow to make the stairs go down at the end. We know that our X has stopped at 70, so let's start at 70. X, and we're going to go another 5 down, and this for the time being, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. Change that to 70 also. Testing. So we need to somehow reverse these blocks to go the opposite. So starting at this height of 5, we know that's 5 because we've gone 50 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 or plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 up to 55. And then we've gone across at 50 far at 5 height. And now we want to start at 5 and go down back to 0. So at the moment it's starting at zero and going one, two, three, four, five, going up. So let's modify this for loop in here. We need to somehow turn this into a negative. So the way we can do that is let's find out, make another variable and say, uh, we'll call this a how or the negative number. And this is going to be similar to this. This is where it becomes a little bit complicated. Except we're going to time this by negative 1. So negative 1 
When you time something by negative 1 and becomes this, whatever this number is, it becomes a negative itself. So this negative number is going to be the amount that we want to go down or take away from our 5 value because we know the height has to start at 5 here from up here. So our bridge goes across at 5 height. We need to now start at 5 and go start going down. And this negative number is going to give us the amount we need to take away from 5 each step relating to the x. So let's go plus negative number. So this is going to be, if we follow the code, 70. 70 takes 70 is 0. That's going to be 0. So we're going to start at 5. So 5 plus 0 is nothing. So our bridge will start going, starting at, the, our down ramp of our bridge will start at 5. Next time it goes around, it's going to be 71. So x is 71. Take 70 is 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So 5 plus negative 1 is going to be 4. So now a brick will go down a level, hopefully. Let's see what happens. So save, play. And trigger. Ta da! So now our bricks go the opposite. Oops, we triggered that other one. Let's just go back. I saw there that there was a brick missing from the ground, so we need to extend that uh, loop to go one more iteration. But it worked. Let's find that loop and let's change this to 6 so it will loop through one more time. And that's test. And there you go. Now we have a cool little bridge that we can walk over. Now the location is on your map is going to be maybe different because you might have a different different size map. So it's really important that you understand how for the X, these axes, these axes of your 3D world. The X goes this way, the Z in my case goes this way, and the Y is up and down. And these, with all these trans transformed opposition, uses those X, Y, and Z coordinates. We're always setting Z to 50, um, but we are dynamically changing the X and the Y. So last thing I would do is comment just to make sure I know, understand what's going on here because if I looked at this code it would look very confusing and I wouldn't know, understand what's going on. This creates the steps up. This creates the middle flat and this creates the down steps. And you can go in more detail with your comments too. You can go in here and comment. Um, so this creates a this works out a how this works out how much to take away from the height, which is five. And then this takes away that number. So there it is. That's how we would create a bridge or, a, or a, uh, an arc function. If we wanted to move that arc around, we're going to have to play with these x and y positions. So we would start that and well, we would change this. So let's change this to say 20 in all cases. And my bridge should now move on my z axis that way more. Let's play and see what happens. It should move a lot further back because this is the x-axis I'm running on the, on the x-axis. I mean the, the z-axis. So if I want my bridge more over there, I'm going to put in something like, if I put in 90, it'll be on the opposite side. So let's put in 90 for my z. 
happens if I play, that should be, instead of being down there, it's going to be over here almost, because our map is 100. There it is. So 20 was over there, 50 was in the middle, 90 is all the way over here, because my map goes to 100 on that scale. So I play with those variables, but that's how we make a bridge dynamically using code only. No, uh, no drop or drag here. This is pure code.